Nigerian elections has come and gone, but we'll be reviewing the challenges and mistakes made and what if social cultural groups like IPOB, OPC and the Arawa become political parties. Chief Ghani Adams is hinting at this possibility. This is Plus Politics and I'm Felicity Ezewike. Chief Ghani Adams has said that the Odua People's Congress, OPC, may switch from being a social cultural entity to become a full-fledged political organization. Adams, who is the coordinator of the OPC Worldwide, said this during an event held in Lagos on Thursday to mark the 25th anniversary of the Yoruba organization. I'm joined by Babashola Adegui, a political analyst, to look at this development. Welcome to the program. It's a pleasure. So, OPC, considering becoming a political um, organization, um, a lot of issues have been raised to, you know, give re um, reasons for this. Before we get there, I ask, is this a good thing? Well, uh, <clears throat> everybody has every right to start any political organization as long as it is within the, um, the law that guides, <coughs> excuse me, that guides political organization in Nigeria and registration. So, it has that right. Also, the, um, the social cultural, of course, more, as far as I'm concerned, it's more or less like a political organization. I'm not talking of political party now. You mean OPC? The OPC. Okay. Because what I understand about OPC is for the interest of a certain people, of a certain tribe. Okay. So, when we look at it, whenever there is any issue in respect of tribes in Nigeria, the interest of OPC will not raise the, that tribe, which is Yoruba, called Odua. You get so it has every right. If, if it likes, it can be a political party. It can be a political movement. So you because don't, you the don't word organization, the I don't understand the word organization, but it could be party or a movement. Okay, just in that same statement, um, during the occasion when he made that statement, that's 25th anniversary of the organization, a group, a faction of the OPC has come out to condemn him for celebrating the 25 years um, of the organization. They are alluded to the fact that he did not respect the founding fathers of that organization and now he's parading himself as the, you know, the leader of the people um, for the organization and they are saying that they do not recognize him. They already seem to be, you know, disharmony in the home front. How will this affect their ambition, should they choose to go ahead? Well, um, disharmony has been in existence for a very long time. I think it was eventually settled a few years ago, whereby the late Dr. Frederick Fashion was invited, likewise, uh, OPC uh, Adams. Uh, Daniel Adams, and the meeting was held, and it was it was agreed that Dr. Fede Fashion should be the president of the OPC, while Ghani Adams should be the coordinator of the OPC. I think that was what eventually they agreed on and to make allow peace in that <coughs> group. But that doesn't seem to be, um, you know, El Dorado yet. As it stands now, there is a faction that is saying, shouldn't that be more of the concern that the organization should be considering to put their house in order before they bring out a public front? There is no way it would be that easy now because there, are a, there is a group of people in HOPC that are lawyer to the late Freddie Fashion. And they have never recognized that Adams of Shomole, uh, sorry, Ghani Adams as the head of OPC. I've always known of two different OPC fashions across all the states in the Southwest. Oh. I've always known of that. They have two different, but one thing we are sure of now is that Adam, uh, Ghani Adams is the only OPC leader in the Southwest. The other people you are talking about, we don't even know them. Yes, we know there is a fashion, we don't know them. So whether he has come to reap from where he has not sown or not, the main thing is that this is the only figure 
known as the leader of OPC in the Southwest. What makes the organization so special? Are they revered enough to command the political will and power they need to do that transition to a political organization? Well, maybe we first need to look at the history of OPC, how OPC invest, uh, came about. If you remember very well, we had the election in June, 20, June 12, 1993, which was Hanold. And the following year, all it's these strikes, there was a lot of violence and the people. So a group of people came together and said, come, we have to protect the interests of Yoruba, most especially when Sonny Abacha became the head of state and chose some people to work with him. And they discovered that the interest of Yorubas was not there. So they now decided, let's come together. Let's form an association called Udua People's Congress that will be in the interest of Yoruba, just like the action group of those days. And also, just like the Afeni Ferry that we also know no, now, but along the line, many some people thought that the OPC, if you are protecting the uh, protecting the interest of the Yorubas, then you should be able to fight for them. That was when Adams uh, Ghani Adams came in, and that was because I told Fashe, Dr. Fashe, Frederick Fashe, what he actually wanted is let us have discussion, let us see how this this thing can be done amicably. But Ghani Handels was thinking otherwise. He felt we have to get this thing by home, is by power, regardless of what weapons or whatever. That is exactly what brought Ghani Handels to the uh, to the blue light. So, and for that, they have been moving together until there was a discord between the two of them, because they understand the purpose of OPC was not being followed by the Ghani Adams group, which lasted for a very long time. Now, Ghani Adams is the head of OPC. Whether he's recognized by some people or not, he is the one we know. And he, has, he is now saying that he's no longer going to be a social cultural. It's going to be a political organization. Mm -hmm. So for me, well, he, he's saying they're considering. He hasn't said categorically okay, that yes, that they are be considering. the action. Yeah. Well, it's a consideration. It could come to limelight or not. But if it's going to come to a limelight, it's welcomed. Are but the, it all depends on the strength of the party. And what do we mean by the strength? We are talking about the people. The support. That, that the, the was financial actually support. the original part of the question. Like, is it revered enough? Is, is it strong enough? Does it have, you know, the, is it that special enough to pull the required um, uh, people outside? Because Nigeria is made up of more than Yorubas. Outside the boundaries of Yoruba land to form a formidable force that will make well, an impact. Um, I don't know how OPC is being financed. I don't know how it's being funded. But I want to believe that OPC is being supported by government. Because if OPC is not supported by those in government, OPC would have been dead a long time. Because looking at the people, the leaders of the party, it's not that they are millionaires, it's not that they are billionaires. Then something must have made that party to, to last Stay this long. Okay, there's something he said during that, some of the reasons why it is becoming, you know, almost inevitable for them that they will uh, turn to a political organization. He talked about the issue. He said they've been able to achieve the June 12th after many years yeah. to get some sort of recognition, real recognition for the uh, actions that was taken then. And then he also talked about the issue of restructuring. He said the country hasn't really, the government hasn't shown the will, and that the people, members of the OPC, are, um, are tired of agitation, that they want to become players in the political scene in order for them to really uh, be able to, you know, effect some sort of change. My question is, will forming a political organization be stronger than the pressure group that they are now, enough to hasten action towards restructuring of this country? Um, for OPC to change to a political organization, that means the focus will change. They are going to draw new objectives. They are going to have new vision. They are going to have a new mission, and everything will change. Except, it's telling me that it's going to divide the the social cultural into two. One with the remain the social cultural, and the other one with the political organization. Yes, he made some point. They have been agitating for June 12th, and they got that. But the main thing is the restructuring. 
which the government of today is not even looking at. But like I always tell people, when we talk of restructuring, most of the time I always avoid talking about restructuring because when restructuring started, we have understand of what restructuring they were talking about. They now nobody seems to have a good Nobody word seems to understand it yeah. because I, I've concluded that restructuring is now a vague word. Is but who, whose fault is that, really? Because at some point, before the ABC came into power, they were talking about restructuring as well. And they said that's one of the things that they're going to do. And then they came in. Uh, the last we heard about the matter was that they're setting up a committee to review um, what they define as. Isn't that trying to sort of set the agenda just to deviate a little? Well, the fault, the fault actually lies with everybody that has led this country since 1999. One thing I've noticed about our political leaders, they listen to the hands of the people. They know what the people want. They take it from you and metamorphose that into a political slogan, which they will use to campaign against the sitting government. When PDP was there, yes, there was a committee, a constitutional committee that they spent about four or five months in Abuja where resources were wasted. And eventually they came up with documents for the government's uh, good luck, Jonathan, to do what? To endorse and make But good luck, Jonathan did not do anything about it. Believing that he will use that to campaign to convince people that support me and I'm going to implement this in the next uh, term. But unfortunately, it did not win. And APC used that same restructuring to take power from PDP. Now, on getting there, they now decide that, come, we are not going to use it because it belongs to the last government. We have our home plan. We have to follow our home plan. The same PDP that was in power now is now using the same restructuring to campaign against the APC. So, as far as I'm concerned, the restructuring is not about the people. I'm talking of those in government now. It's not about the people. It's about their own individual interests. But when we are talking of restructuring, we are talking of, let us redefine the country. Let us ask, are we good with the way we are going? If no, is the federal government, are we okay with federation? Are we okay with confederation? Or we want to go into a regional system? Do you, do you think that this group now that's saying that they're going to, you know, you know, transition to a political organization, will their choice be able to hasten this conversation on restructuring? The OPC cannot do it alone. If OPC needs other organizations for them to agree and mount pressure, that is if we have a listening leader. OPC cannot, OPC is just one organization among so many in a particular that, region. That, 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 therein lies the problem. Because in the previous um, election, we had of not too young to run. We had a lot of young people showing choice. But they seem, even when they tried to do uh, that forced, um, third force that they tried to do to come together and present a consensus candidate, it didn't work. That's for young people that say they're very progressive. Now, you have organizations like OPC. You have other pan um, um, organization um, say Panibo, Pan, yeah, Erewa, Pan and everybody. all of that. They want to form their own political organization. Will that work? Because these are the three major languages in this country. And if they choose to create their own political organization, what kind of scenario are we expecting to see? Well, for them to achieve that, it's not necessarily until, until they become a political organization. But one thing that is important, that we all need to achieve what we want is to speak with one voice. Do you see that? As a possibility. <laughs> I'm not seeing that as a possibility. So what do we need to do for people to actually come together as a group, including OPC agitation? Everybody needs to put down his ego. Everybody needs to understand we are of we are of the same country, we are all Nigerians. Everyone needs to understand that there is a problem in Nigeria and the people that can solve that problem are all of us together. The ego must be put aside, our pride must be put aside, the position we are holding, we must be able to recognize a, 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 a Southeasterner as my brother. I must be able to say, oh, the Northerner is my brother. We must be able to agree on what we want to achieve, and we must be able to also say that we are ready to go with whatever we agree. It's not a matter of 
having a meeting now, discussion, come what with a final conclusion, then some will now say, don't mind them. They give some people money. That is why, you, you understand that. That's why we agree it was not our intention. Because to some people, restructuring will work. To some people, it will not work. To some people, let everybody go on their own way. Let everybody be an independent entity. To some people, no. So until we, until we redefine Nigeria, until all of us have that understanding that Nigeria is breaking and we need to remove Nigeria, then I don't see this a possibility. Uh, the, the whole situation sometimes uh, baffles me when we talk about how these different groups are going to come to work. We have suggestions that has not been implemented on how this country should move forward. And then we have these pressure groups on the side that are aware of some of Let's say for the 2014 CONFAB, for instance, mm -hmm. OPC knows this, Ohanez Ndibo knows this, Arewa, um, uh, Arewa group mm -hmm. also knows this. Can't they come together and be the real pressure groups that they are? Won't they be able, even if they do it individually with similar purposes, push for this restructuring? They'll be able if to. If they do don't it. come together, we've talked about them coming together. Now I'm looking at them as separate entities applying the pressure for which they are known. It's possible for them to do that, to man pressure individually. But one thing I've realized about our leaders, about those people that we think are leading the interest of the people, is about their self, about themselves, sorry. They are, they, some of them need fame, some of them need access to the people in government. That's when you will see them leading, they will shout, they will cry, they will say a lot of things against the government. But when they eventually get there, they will now come out and sing a new song. You get my point? That's why I always say something. Until we see people that are ready to say, no matter what, I'm ready to die for this country. I want to sacrifice myself. I'm ready to step on toes. Until we see that, I'm not seeing the possibility. But individually, if we go and we are not concerned about money, because that is where the problems always <laughs> lie. We are not concerned about money. If we are not concerned about the portfolio, we are not concerned about position. All we want is we want the government, the sitting president, to implement the 2040 confab, they will achieve it. But as long are, as that is. Are you the, being really realistic that in this day and age, people are not looking for something in exchange for something? Even the whole uh, agitation that we're talking about is for us to get something that will make us feel like something. Well, right? That's why I said <laughs> if it is not about their interest, how, it is not about we, their money. How can, how can we make it? Because politics is a lucrative business in this country, whether we like to acknowledge it or not. And people will do all sorts to get in there. And once they get in there they're not letting go we have leaders that have been um you know we've been recycling since before independence and they're still in power they're still holding on so how do you how do we even begin to start to have conversation about how we are going to you know restructure the country who will allow that happen no but the national assembly will not even allow that happen because today let me tell you something about restructuring. If the last government actually wanted to do it well, there was something it should have done. There is no referendum in the Constitution. That's number one. Number two, they, the government should have sponsored a bill that will make the people to go out for a referendum and endorse the 2014 Confab. That was not done. That is why the national after the after the confab this, this thing, they submitted to the national assembly and the national assembly actually to them, no, we cannot look into this thing. Why? Because they are doing our job. It's just like a duplication of job. But like I said, if not for the ego of the national assembly, there was nothing wrong, or there is nothing wrong in national assembly to pick up those reports and review them and use them to set a new pace for this country. That's number one. Number two, on, on the finance of fund, the truth is in Nigeria, pol politics is expensive. I was telling someone yesterday, 
as long as you are into politics, as long as you are, even you are contesting for counselor, if you don't have up to 50 million naira, don't try it. Because there are some people you'll be feeding them in the morning, afternoon, and evening till the election time. So how, how can the OPC that is talking about doing becoming a political organization, how can they key into some of this ideology and try to, you know, start from the roots to change our orientation to see that uh, politics should not be about money, but it should be about serving. Shouldn't that maybe form the core of their movement? They need to start from the, from the root. And they need to start from their members. It's not about the association. If the members' minds are renewed, I can tell you it's the members that will go out. They have a lot of, a lot of followers in the Southwest. The people will now start educating. But the truth is the members are hungry. The members will only speak out. But when they dangle coins in front of them, I can tell you they will sing a new song. Where and are the as, good men? As long as poverty is still ruling this land. As long as poverty is still ruling this land, I am not seeing anybody doing anything better until until we see someone who says, I'm ready to sacrifice my time, I'm ready to sacrifice my life, I'm ready to sacrifice my money for Nigeria to be great. But who? I don't know. When? I can't even see it. So which of these organizations, do you all see the OPC in the forefront of this? I'm not seeing OPC in the forefront of this. Why? Why? Because OPC has its own problem. The man in charge of OPC is also the Aaron Okakao for Yoruba land. He has two offices he's holding. Which of course shouldn't be. This of course shouldn't be. That's number one. Number two, before OPC can get this done, OPC needs to meet with the governors, with the leaders of the Yorubas. But the question is how many people will Ghani Adams invite and they will honor his invitation? How many people? The only thing they can invite him to a meeting, he has his own uh, okay. point, then everybody leaves. But for Ghani Adams to champion that, how many people actually give that respect to Ghani Adams? Yes, he's well known. He's a, he's, 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 he's a leader of a Congress. Good. But how many people actually give him that respect? Good question. Before I let you go on this, I'd like to know your thoughts generally about, you know, this anger in the land, about restructuring, um, about insecurity, about how we can get better governance. Just a concluding thought on this, based on the reasons given by Ghani for wanting to become a political organization. Well, restructuring, like I said, we need to buy, we need to, uh, what's it called, call on the president to implement that confirm report. That's number one. Number two, and I will continue to say it, as long as poverty is ruling this land, the rich will continue to be rich because they are the ones that have the money to contest for political position. They are the ones that have the money to spend. And when they spend and they go back to that office, they will steal more. So the poor will continue to be poor. And the poor will only be relevant when it is time for election. And <laughs> even, on, even on the day of election, yeah. if you are contesting and you don't spend on the day of election, there is a possibility that you lose your election. I guess that's where we're going to have to wrap it. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right, we'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll be looking at Nigerian elections to stay with us. <laughs>